So good, man. So good. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to have an excellent, excellent showing for you. Now, what I'm about to show you is available at cavapes.com, okay? The MO Plus. I don't even know why I tell you guys. You know? Let me pull up some stuff here. I don't even know why I tell you. You read the. It's like you when you first go watch a video, you read the title, and then you click it. <laughs> you want to watch it. <laughs> I don't know, man. Todd did a review on this one. Uh, Honest Reviews did on on this one. Super cool. Let me go ahead and pull this up. Oh, and I should have pulled this up before, right? I hope you guys have been doing well. Really well. Got off early. I can get a video up. I'm going to try and get this one done. And I'm going to try and get the uh, gang mod done this week. So, look forward to that. I hope to see each and every one of you guys there, man. I got a nickel build in the Goblin Mini right now, and, you know, in case you don't believe me, I guess, I don't even know why I would show that, and I'll, I'll, we'll get into all that. I really plan on doing the build for this one, for sure. A lot of people with issues with their nickel builds, snapping leads, stuff like that. I'm going to show you what I did with my stuff, and what worked for me, and hopefully it'll help you too, uh, when we do that video. cavapes.com. Links will be in the description. I'm going to set this down because we're going to take it down right now and we're going to get into this. And you can go there you know, in case you're interested in one. You know, I guess a little outline is flavor machine. Flavor machine. If you're a flavor chasing kind of person, I think we all kind of are in our own way, right? We're always looking for better flavor. You know, products that deliver more flavor. That's kind of what we look for. This is right up your alley. Let's take it down. Here we go, man. Bye. Come on, man. But here we are. So, you're probably wondering where the packaging was. It came in a Ziploc bag. And really no extra goodies. It just kind of came like this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it off the autofocus here. Move it forward for you. It's been around 22 mil. Okay. Brass 510. Very well done on this. I'm going to go ahead and start from the top like always. And you're looking at it right now going, that's kind of crazy. On the top there. Obviously that's where the um, airflow comes into play. You know? So. Cool. Let's take it apart. So first thing you're going to want to do is the way this is designed is the barrel goes on. This center barrel, if you will, screws in and it holds it all together. You know, I could put this on a tender foot all day long and I'll never get the barrel off. You know, so sitting on your mod, don't you don't ever have to worry about your barrel coming off. However, you do have to worry about your drip tips pulling this out. I've got a make right here. Uh, this happens to be my one of my favorite friction fits from Mink Machine is the piston. It sticks in there and this one fits pretty nice. But you'll go to pull it out, and it'll pull this section out. This does come out, this little ring here. And we'll go ahead and pull that out. Let's go ahead and start from the top and work our way down. So again, like I said, it threaded in. So let's go ahead and just unthread. Okay. Now you probably heard some clinking going on here as it spun around these teeth. Even though that's happened. And believe me, it's going to happen. Um... I'm not getting any dangerous kind of ugly scuffs or anything like that, okay? No scuffies. Which I'm happy about. Um, very happy about. So not really nothing too much to really talk about there. Uh, so I, like I said, we're going to pop this out. Let's go ahead and do that. Take a screwdriver or something here. And I just cleaned it. 
and and you're looking at it going, wow, Trevor, that's that's in there pretty tight, dude. Uh, greed. Um, but once it gets juice on it, it comes right out. Probably the only downfall of this Addy for me is this piece. There you go. And I'm looking everywhere because I'm thinking, why have this? And, I, and I'm, I've been thinking of all kinds of things, and maybe you know, and I don't. If you do, please, please put it in the comments. But maybe it, it comes out, but I can't find a drip tip to fit this. You know, maybe I can get Trey to make me one from Mink Machine. Uh, link from Mink in the description as well. But I don't know. Uh, next up, we're going to take off the teeth here. Just like that. Simple as can be. Pop it right off. There's the teeth. And looking at this thing, you're probably thinking, oh boy, I don't know about that. Boy, it fits on here so nice. I mean, it snugs up in there really well. Like, it just, you know, I tend to push up and spin it a little bit, and it really grabs it. So, um, I never have too much of an issue as far as it goes. See how it sits right up against it? That looks clean to me. This kind of groove right here is really, really nice for grip. I found, and it just gives it a nice uh, aesthetic appeal to it. Let me pop that back off. O ring on the top, right at the top. And I mean, right up there. And that's all it sits on. That's it. Inside threaded again. Threading super smooth. Very, very smooth. I'm going to go ahead and pop this back in. Sometimes you have to give it a little, little spinny spin spin. Little spinny spin spin. There we go. I'll go ahead and put my piston in there right now. Why not? Alright, so it sits in there just like that. Cool. Set that up to the side. And I'm actually going to put the teeth back on. I think you got the, the idea of that. Okay. Next up is the barrel. Now to get the barrel off, even though really, technically by, the, by design, it doesn't have to be that tight, they did an amazing job here of making this tight. It's, it's a nice snug fit, and I love that. Love that. Again with the teeth. There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, the way this works is this comes in, sits over. Okay, you can adjust your airflow. You can close these completely off, or you can open them up. So you can close them off. They're all closed off. Spin it again. And, you know, cater to exactly what you want. Simple as that. Now when you look on the inside, there's a little chamber going all the way around. See that? That's where your airflow comes in through the side, down on the long side that inner barrel, through and up underneath the coil. Let me show you the design. Set that off to the side. And thread it here off my tender foot. It comes through and it's got all these numerous, you know, six airflow holes. Some are kind of halfway, some are kind of closed off, some are a little, but they're all pretty much the same, you know? As far as you can see, that some's more closed off than others. You're already noticing now, by now, the ceramic. Uh, kind of a base, if you will. Single O-ring holding it together. And like I said, really nice O-ring. Brass. Now, I haven't taken this all apart to look at it. I don't feel like I need to. I kind of like where it's at. Classic. Like the immortalizer design here with the... These posts... K fun style build. Right? There's your airflow hole. That's where it your airflow comes up underneath the coil. Your wire gets trapped by these two screws on the side. So you're going to build it like, a, like you would a K fun. Both, you can see where the legs are going to go. And your coil sits right in the middle. We're going to nickel build this today. 7 wraps, 8th bit, 28 gauge, NI 200. Phillips or flathead. I just tend to use the flathead. Um, I just found it grabs it a lot better. 
and you're going to notice that one post has the extra screw. See it? Bing, right there. Now at first that post would move on me quite a bit until I tighten that down. Once I tighten that down I haven't had really any problems at all. You don't need to go super tight with this though. You really don't. It just needs to stay there. Nice snug stay there. Nice threading. I really like this design a lot. Now if you're going to be using this, let's say you're thinking right now you're looking at like dude tiger coil, right? You got to be wary of the size of this channel here because you don't want your coils touching either of the posts, right? It can touch the deck. The ceramic's non-conductive. But it can't touch these posts. It just can't. If it does, you're going to get a short. I found that with 8 bits, like 3 millimeter driver, whatever you're going to use to wrap around, if it's 3 millimeter, it's a tight fit. Okay? Now something like nickel where it's thin wire, it's going to fit just fine. Hopefully you'll see what I mean. So if you're going to thinking about getting this and you're thinking Tiger Coil, just be wary of the size you're going to use. I tend to go 330 seconds with my Tiger builds in here. Cool. Let's engage salt and pepper mode. Get this going, man. Throw in the tender stand. And maybe we'll bring it up. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's let's bring it up. So, we're gonna do another um, showing of how I wrap my nickel wire once again. All right, this one I'm using an I two hundred twenty eight gauge, nice and simple from Lightning Vapes. I'm gonna pull out what I need here. All right, um, you know, six seven wraps, what I kind of like, and I think we'll go seven wraps today. I'm going to go ahead, now that I have it out, okay, it's just I have my length here. Uh, let's say you've clipped it already. This is what I want you to do. I'm going to take the, the pad of my finger and my thumb now, and I'm going to drag it across the wire. I'm just going to do this a few times. I'm going to strength, this strengthens the wire. It makes it a little easier to work with. You know, if you worked with nickel and you haven't done this, and then you do this, you'll see a difference. I believe you will. And that's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and clip it. I have all my tools ready here. Got my 3 millimeter driver. And I'm going to wrap 7. So here's how I'm going to do it. I want, these, I want this coil spaced. A great way to get spaced even coils every single time is to wrap your coils. No rhyme or reason. Just make sure they're spaced. Okay. Just make sure they're nice and spaced. There's no, there's nothing special going on here. It's just kind of wrapped around. Now I'm going to take it. And I'm going to hold one lead with my fingers. And I'm just going to press it against the wall like this. That's it. And, I, I'm, and I, I'm going to feather it. So I'm just going to continue to feather this. I'm going to pull on the leads a little bit. But as you feather it in, as you kind of keep pushing it in, um, I think it was Andrew, Andrew Delashaw. Shout out to Andrew, man. He put on some really cool information about why that works on the last time I showed that technique was strengthening the wire. Andrew, if you're watching, put that information again, man, so people can check that out. I thought that was really cool. You're a super smart dude. You, like, know everything. <laughs> so we got it and I'm going to show you the finished product eventually there we go see not bad I don't think that's that bad and it doesn't have to be perfect I just like them spaced and if I can get them like evenly spaced the better now let's take it down then here we are. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up. Just a little bit here. I want to leave myself some room. You know, I don't want it to be cramped while I'm doing this. At all. 
you know, make it easy on yourself. I'm simply going to set it in the middle. Take my lead, and I'm going to pick one. And that one kind of seems to want to... I might do this back one first, because I kind of have a really good visual on it. So, I got my lead in here. I'm going to start tightening it, tightening it down. And I'm going to take my time here, and I'm watching it as I tighten it down. You can kind of see if it grabs the wire, and it grabbed it. That's good. Next up. I can pull this out, spin it around, and you'll kind of see, hopefully, that I have that trap there. I'm going to push this back down under. And after you have one, you can kind of trap the other here with your thumb. Like I'm holding the lead down against the deck, right where I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Again, it doesn't need to be super tight, but it needs to be snug. Okay, that one it needs to come over a little bit. That's great. I'm super happy with that. That's good. I'm going to pull that out. And I'll give you a good look see here. Good look, you Lou. It's far from done. Far from done. But there we go. It's not perfect. It's not the prettiest thing you've ever seen. It's just in between both posts and it's not touching. Like again, like I said, it's not done. Let's clip it nice and close here. Nice and close, which is really easy with this atomizer. It's not a big deal to build, build, and especially when you're doing single coils. I'm not really happy with that bottom lead, but I think I'm gonna go with it, man. So all I really did there was just kind of nudge it, and uh, it's done. Let's wick it. Kind of cool, right? Get a good look at that. Jeez. Worst. So I'm using my usual Japanese cotton. And when I wick these things with my nickel, I always look at kind of loose. A little looser than canthal. Not much, just a little looser. And hopefully it'll show here when I wick this. So I'm going to cut, cut what I need, and over time you kind of figure out what just exactly what you need. Um, you know, it just kind of happens. If I were to guess, I wish I had my caliper on me. I don't know, maybe, maybe 7 mils worth or so, 7 to 10. I've cut an angle in it, and now I'm just going to twist it up. I'm going to roll it up, not compressing too hard. I'm going to sit back here so you can see me. I'm just twisting it, kind of, and as I have it really tight, I'm pulling it apart. Not too much that I rip it, just I'm really stretching that cotton out. But for the most part, I want it to stay pretty fluffy, like a nice tube. I'm going to thread it through like this. And as I pull through, I'm just going to gently tug on this side. There we go. That's great. That's great. Just like that. I'm really happy with that. Nice and fluffy on the outsides, but I could I felt it. The entire coil is full of cotton. But it's not so full that it's really pressing, you know, pressing from the inside out. It's just nice and snug in there. Nice and snug. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna clip it right with this ceramic base, maybe just a hair off. On both sides. Just a hair off. Just, just a hair off the edge there. And I'm going to tuck it in. Simple as that. I can move this. Just pop it in. Just like that. I want it to go all the way down and touch the bottom of the base. 
I don't want this cotton kind of levitating from the bottom of the ceramic cup. I want it to just touch the cup. And if you cut it just barely on the outside of the cup, it'll hit perfect every time. Maybe not perfect, but, you know. Nice and fluff. There it is, man. Here's the finished build. And you see how easy that was. Like, that was super easy. You know? But you see how tight it is, you know, with a 3 millimeter in there with nickel. But it's definitely not touching. You know? Nice and simple. Nice and simple here. And as far as leaking goes, never. Never had a leaking problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it off the tender. I'm actually going to have a vape real quick, too. Screw the Goblin Mini here. Great daddy. Great tank. I'm going to set that up to the side. I'm going to throw this on. And I'm going to grab my juice. And I'm going to shake it. I have some uh, Hasahab from Coil Vapes, man. Hasahab. It's an inside joke between Dean and a friend of his. All right, this is like a mango yogurt. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some juice on there. Once it hits, I'm going to hit the fire button, and it's going to pull it right into the coil. And I'm going to continue to do that. It's great. And as you see, as I'm pulsing it and I'm doing this, the coils are starting to really come, become glowing nice, you know, and evenly. Looks great. I'm really happy with that. Good. All right, next up, barrel. This is what's great about this Addy this screw-in section. So I got it in there. No rhyme or reason. Like, I don't aim it. I just put it in. Next up, barrel. Nice and tight. Open up the airflow to wherever you like it. And I kind of like it wide open. Like that. That's the finished look, man. Let's take it up. Let's take it up. Enough of this nonsense. It's terrible camera work. Good, man. You know, the look of it alone, it's not shaky. It's not rattly. It's, it's, it's good looking, man. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I have it set right now, and oof, probably a little too much there. Let me drop it down. To about 400 Fahrenheit, probably. All right. And let's see where that goes. I just kind of feather. I just kind of play with my settings till it hits right. You know. Flavor. Perfect. So I have it at about 430. Now, what's great about this? Four drops. No look, no problem. It's never going to leak. The only place this thing can leak is if maybe you put it in a pack pack or something like that, backpack or something like that, and you, it, it sits upside down and it can run up the sides. Sometimes it gets gurgly, you know, depending on how much juice you throw in there, but really... <laughs> Hardly ever. I, I've never really had a big deal with this thing. It just doesn't leak. The design is fantastic. The airflow is what I like to call like um, like a lazy lung hit. You know, there's really no effort into it. <gasps> it's just... It's warm. It's flavorful. It's heavenly. 
so good. It brings out some really different notes and all the liquids I like. Sweet pea especially. Uh, Hasa, oh my god, so good. Mango, it really brings out the guava with this atomizer, I think, that's in there. Ah, oh, so good. When I first saw this, it was like one of those ones, you know, where it's kind of like, ooh, and it kind of moved forward. I didn't really give it a shot. Never, I didn't give it a fair chance. And, uh, you know, I heard a few of the guys talking about it. And they, and they were dead on the nose with this. Um, flavor machine. If you're looking for a nice flavor addy, this is it, man. Great price, too. That's great. Plenty of vapor coming out of it. The draw, you might hear a little whistle. It does happen. Closing off halfway, I haven't noticed a very big difference versus um, wide open. You know what I mean? Uh, but it does tend to take the whistle down just a little bit. Let's see. Really, it's not that bad. It probably sounds a lot worse on camera, but it's really not that bad. I've definitely had worse. Four drops. Done. So good, man. I highly recommend this one, especially for... Uh, if you're looking to get a little extra flavor out of your juice, it's nice and simple. Despite the post, and the post may seem a little, uh, what's the word? Uh, intimidating, maybe. It may, you may even think that it's geared towards, uh, you know, uh, ribbon wire, maybe. You know, it's it's not that bad. It's one leg at a time. That's where you take it, man. Just throw it in there. Take your lead. Put it on there. Get that first one to snug. If you try to over tighten the, that screw, all it's going to do is take the wire, like let's say here's the base of the screw and here's your wire, it's going to sit on it. And as you twist it, it's going to push the wire out every time. You just want it making pressure with the base, you know? It's not like a regular eyelet where they drill all the way through it and you tighten it down. And here, it's let's say this is the wire through the eyelet and it just keeps and it keeps pushing down, 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 down. It snaps, you know? Uh, just just down, just to hold it stiff. You'll know when it's stiff. When you go to push it in, it stays there. It's nice and stiff. That's all you want with it. That's it. I haven't had a problem trapping anything really with it, uh, with the way I showed you. Hopefully, I covered all the bases on this one. Hopefully, hopefully. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to email me at tjvapingreviews at aol.com or simply comment down below, man. Thank you, Todd from CA Vapes, for giving me a shot at this, man. It's great. It's great. You were dead. You were right on the money with this one. Um, link in the description for Coil Vapes. I don't know if Hasa Hub is available right now. I was lucky enough to uh, get a taste of it. It's about a uh, link in the description, man. True blessing to have each and every one of you, man. I hope to see you at the next one. Blessings. Let's do this and let's end this. Classic form, dude. Classic form, bro. Yeah. See you guys. Take care, man.